Breaking news yeah. coming out of St. Louis Park, a car going into a pond with kids inside. We were wondering if there was any surveillance video of this attack. It was just handed to us a few moments ago. So I'm going to play it here. This is the best we can do at the moment. You're going to see this woman walking across the street. St. Paul police are now responding to our story about an investigation. The city of St. Paul making some changes starting tomorrow. If you don't follow those changes, you could get one of these. A bill gaining speed at the state capitol could change the landscape for breeders and animal shelters. The Wheelock Parkway Bridge in the Arlington Avenue. Avenue Bridge both have to come down for the next several months. Season ticket holders will be coming here to consider different pricing plans. Winning it could be a real long shot. Millions of people will see pay raises, but it could be at the expense of some jobs here. It's actually happening in Michigan. The state is installing these talking urinal deodorizer cakes, hoping to keep the drunks off of the road. Out at a bar, the women aren't talking to you, but at least the urinal, the urinal is. Yeah. <laughs> this is something else. Take a look at this surveillance video. It's coming out of Bakersfield, California. You can see boy riding a tricycle in a driveway. Dog coming from the other side right here, that white SUV. Goes in for the attack of the child, grabbing, dragging that child down the driveway. But then, as soon as the attack happens, the family's cat comes to the rescue. Out of nowhere, pounces on the dog. The dog is actually scared away and runs away. Boy's mother saying he did need a few stitches. He's going to be just fine. The dog belonged to a neighbor. The dog now under observation. But mm. the cat there, of all things, Who saving the thought? day. How about that? Welcome back. As you know, for about an hour and a half now, we've been following this breaking news yeah. coming out of St. Louis Park, a car going into a pond with kids inside. We do have team coverage yeah. inside. Are we hearing anything about the conditions of the three we know, at least three, that were taken to the hospital? We don't Time. know. We are that. continuing to follow some breaking news out of St. Louis Park. And this for about two and a half hours now, a car went into a pond with children inside. We know a mother and five children were inside the vehicle at the time when this happened around six o'clock this morning. We understand that CPR was performed on them when they were brought out. We don't know the condition of the five children. We have crews standing by for a news conference from St. Louis Park that is expected to happen at nine o'clock in about 35 minutes. We'll continue to update at you as we get more information. And guys, this is a crazy story even by bachelor party standards. It's all started last night. 11 guys decide to rent an RV up in Anoka, all part of a bachelor party. They were headed to the Kentucky Derby. They left last night. They made it to here about two and a half hours to Winona. They took a little break here. They went back to the RV and would you believe inside the RV they found a dead body. Opened it up and I see too late. Obviously, with no RV, they couldn't continue on to Kentucky. They told us they're going to plan the bachelor party and actually have it tonight in Minneapolis. As far as the investigation goes, the body was taken to the Mayo Clinic to be ID'd. Winona police, we stopped by there this afternoon. They're not saying anything more about this case. The crack of the bat means Saints baseball is about to make a comeback to Midway Stadium. Ah, the boys of summer. Or should we say, uh, chew? My eyes are red, nose running, and uh, constantly tearing up. Even former Twins championship players aren't immune. When I was in the Metrodome back in the day, we didn't have to worry about that. But in outdoor baseball, you do now. We all do. It's the warm, dry, windy air. Perfect conditions for blowing around that tree pollen. And leading to a spike right now in allergies. Just how extreme it is. Infielder Brandon Wyckoff, hoping to make the team's final cut this year, says his runny eyes aren't cutting it. I try and take Claritin uh, when I think it's coming, try and beat it by a couple weeks or so, but it never seems to work. He's doing the right thing, says allergist Dr. Pramod Kelkar. We get a sense that most likely it's going to be one of the bad years. But he says it doesn't have to be bad for you. Some of the nose sprays that used to be prescription nose sprays until last year are now also available as over-the-counter medications, and people can try that. And speaking of trying that, what the heck, I did a quick try out for the Saints. I'm not hitting any home runs. My hitting, nothing to sneeze at. In fact, it seemed to bring a tear to Al Newman's eyes. Or wait, is that allergies? Nose is always running, my tears. I just don't want to think I'm a crybaby. 29 guys trying to make the team. It went down to 28 because I got cut. I think it's probably because I was the only one wearing a tie. They got to get down to 23 players by the start of the season. The home opener is a week from tomorrow. Guys, I got to tell you, I'm not much of a basketball player here. That half court shot that Amir made, I could have never made it. However, for about 20 minutes last night, I could have played in the game because all I would have had to do was this. Here's Amir Coffee from. Oh, he got it! Coffee! 
You know, just so preparing, uh, you know, pray to God that it goes in. It went in all right from almost 70 feet out. Amir Coffey's game winner, a miracle buzzer beater. It took me a few seconds to actually realize that it went in. The basket sent Hopkins to the championship game against Lakeville North tomorrow night, but don't ask this sophomore to do that again. I think that was a you know once in a lifetime. I don't think he could. I could hit that again, so I'm paying me to do it. The number one play on ESPN last night. Safe to say, mom was more nervous than he was. And I felt like, oh my goodness, I need those paddles to start my heart again because it was like a heart attack moment. Hopkins into the state championship game. But if that was a heart attack moment, it followed 20 minutes of barely a pulse basketball, downright boring. You might have a riot here from the fans. And does this generate talk next year of instituting a shot clock in high school? With no shot clock in the high school. League. Hopkins threw four overtimes, mostly just held the ball, opting to let the clock wind down to take a final shot for a win. Boring for fans, yes, but Hopkins' coach defends it, saying he'd do it again. Within the rules, within the strategy, you know, I, I think we did what we, we should do. I mean, why miss it, then let them hold it for 50 seconds or two minutes, which they would have done. Now, you might be surprised to hear that Hopkins coach is in favor of a shot clock. So are some league officials. So could things be changing maybe for next year? We'll investigate that tonight at 6. Well, the average person has 26 online accounts. That is a lot of accounts. So here's a question for you. If something happened to the person you love the most, could you find those accounts or even their passwords? Well, as you're about to see, two families tell us there is certain information we all should be dying to share. Our honeymoon, day number one for us. Dale Jensen in Mexico with his wife, Patty. Having the time of my life. Documenting their new lives together, a marriage that would not last long. Where's mom, huh? Where did mom go? Four years after that, Dale got a phone call at work. It was her saying, I think I'm having a heart attack. He rushed home to find his 46-year-old wife had died. At 11 o'clock, we were joking and, and talking on email about a, a vacation that we're going to take that summer. And three hours later, I'm, you know, planning our funeral. Like many couples, Dale and Patty figured they had a lifetime to have that end-of-life talk. You don't think about it. You don't say, gosh, we need a will because I might die tomorrow. When suddenly... You're constantly sort of getting, you know, clubbed over the head with, yeah, she's dead, yeah, she's dead, yeah, she's dead. That's because they never really planned for it. Patty just never got around to putting Dale's name on her bank accounts, car loan, or investments. And even the software engineer couldn't crack her passwords. You know, what's her PIN? I don't know. You never ask people that. You know, it's a four-digit number she, she probably chose when she was 20 years old. Suddenly, everything became too real. Once you're gone, nobody can ever ask you anything ever again. Today would have been his birthday. He would have been 85 today. John and Gail Nafziger were married 17 years when last winter, despite Gail's protests, John went outside to shovel an inch of snow. He came in and said, you were right. I shouldn't have shoveled. The 84-year-old suffered a heart attack and died. In the blur that followed, Gail took some comfort in knowing their affairs were in order. We had discussed it many times. In fact, we had pre-planned funerals. We had a trust. The trust itself was over 100 pages and made clear who got what. Meticulously prepared and often reviewed. If something were to happen, they were ready. Or so she thought. You thought you were set up. Absolutely. And we did. Weren't. We were not. Several lawyers and realtors later, Gail is still sorting things out, blaming the mess on one attorney's really bad advice. Their main thing was do not tell your children what you're doing. This turned out to be probably the worst advice I've ever had in my life. It left Gail and her daughter feuding with other family members. From the minute it happened to today, she's not really had a moment to grieve for him. If their stories had you saying, I don't want that happening to my family, it had me saying the same thing. So I asked estate planning attorney Jody Cohen Press to come by and help me sort out what I needed to know about my own parents. Do they have life insurance? Do they have annuities? Do they have retirement plans? Do they have long-term care insurance? That's a big issue. Mm -hmm. I didn't exactly pass her quiz, so she gave me some homework. You said your parents are having their 50th anniversary? We're throwing them a big party. She told me to fly home and enjoy that 50th anniversary party. But after the cake was cut and the last song played, to sit down with my mom, dad, and brother and get some answers. But where do you even start? You guys had a good time at your 50th? Fabulous. In the off chance there's not a 100th, 
I thought we needed to talk. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. We never had any of this conversation. How come? It's a tough talk because you don't want to think about that time. You don't think about that time. No, she's right. She's absolutely right. If something were to happen to one of you, the other knows where all the passwords are, knows the bank accounts, knows all the information, the other's ready to go? Or? Not exactly. Mom says she is, but Dad? Mom always has taken care of all the details. So if she lands in the hospital, or even worse... He's in bad shape. Who's the executor? Who's in charge if something happens? You are, honey. Why is this news to me? <laughs> I thought you knew it. And it turns out I may not even be the best choice, according to our probate lawyer. You live in Minnesota. Right. And they live across the country. Yes. How will you manage that? How are you going to do that? Do I call you? <laughs> I'm suddenly starting to feel maybe we're not ready. So armed with 10 questions all adult kids should ask their parents, I delivered them rapid fire to my mom and dad. You just give me yes or no, we're ready. Health care directive? Yes. Power of attorney? Yes. Hesitation? Hesitation because I'm still thinking about it. Will? Yes. Trusts? Funded? No. Life insurance? 401ks? Yes. IRAs? Yes. Long-term care insurance? When was the last time you looked at this stuff? As for online passwords? Are they written down in a secure place? Yes. Do you know where that secure place is? No. I couldn't help but notice between the guys, my dad, brother, and me, we didn't know much. I'm learning as much as they are. Isn't it funny that she's doing all the answer? Well, probably not so funny. Cohen Press says that's not all that unusual. One parent may have paid the bills throughout the marriage, and one may have been in charge of taking out the garbage throughout the marriage. And whichever one dies first, either taking out the garbage is going to be a, a horrible event, or balancing the checkbook and paying bills will be difficult. By now, can you guess who does what in this relationship? <laughs> I do the trash. And my mom, the checkbook. So it turns out, even if the one person who controls the money is convinced she's prepared, but no one else is, there's a pretty good chance no one's prepared. You and I have to do, have some conversation about this. I agree. There's a lot of voids here on my part. It's good to have a meeting. It really is good to have a meeting and be able to talk about it. Hmm. Yes, it is. Sometimes just getting everybody together is the hardest part. Well, we do encourage you to have that meeting, to talk about it. We have all kinds of resources, including the top 10 questions to ask your parents or any loved one, really, uh, online. You can get a lot of information by going to KSTP.com right now. Well, helping when it is needed the most. Some local volunteers with the Salvation Army about to hit the road. Right now they are heading... Law enforcement and community leaders are teaming up today looking for ways to try to stop young Somali men in our area from being recruited by terrorists. Now, the threat involves the al-Qaeda-linked terror group al-Shabaab. Panel is going to be holding a seminar in Bloomington today to examine how local men are being recruited, what can be done to stop it, and the lessons learned following this, that shopping mall attack in Kenya back in September... Al-Shabaab is claiming responsibility for that four-day siege that killed 67 people. The FBI is looking into some evidence that trained terrorists are doing their prep work right here in the U.S. Take a look at this FBI surveillance video of an admitted Al-Qaeda terrorist who already killed American soldiers in Iraq. But this video was taken not overseas, but in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Authorities saying he is one of two Al-Qaeda members who were able to come into the U.S. because of a flawed system of background checks that didn't pick up their terrorist pasts. The system failed in the first place. The two men in Kentucky were recently arrested when one of the men's fingerprints was found on a bomb planted in Iraq back in 2005. The U.S. has a storage warehouse of tens of thousands of other unexploded bombs that were confiscated over the years. Experts are now examining those bombs, hoping to match more fingerprints. Some new details this morning about that shooting that happened at the Los Angeles airport recently that killed a TSA agent. Coroner's report now says that Gerardo Hernandez died within five minutes of being shot. Investigators were looking into whether paramedics could have possibly saved him had they gotten to him faster. It took first responders 33 minutes to get him into an ambulance and on his way to the hospital. More details about his death are expected to be released in the next couple of days. It's the release of the city's 97 sampler, one of the few CDs nationwide. People will wait in line for, lots of them already are, lining up at this target. This is in Edina, got the bands playing, music going. The doors, though, are still locked. <laughs> there are only 40,000 copies available. They cost $33. There are 33 songs on two discs this year. It's the 25th volume of the CD, featuring artists like Capital Cities and Matt Hires. CDs go on sale at 8 o'clock this morning, so in about an hour and 45 minutes. As always, the proceeds go to charity.
sounds harmless enough, printing a coupon online, entering a contest, even buying a box of cereal, but maybe it's not. General Mills just changed its privacy policy. If you do any of those things, possibly simply even liking their Facebook page, it could limit your rights to sue the company. Looks like we have a lot of unlikes to do on Facebook today. <laughs> when I get deathly sick and I can't, they're basically telling me how I can sue them. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Gotta read the fine print. Here it is. The new website privacy policy reads, all disputes related to the purchase or use of any General Mills product or service will be resolved through binding arbitration. Now, this wouldn't stop you from suing, but what it would do is tell you how you can sue. No jury of your peers, for instance. Instead, an arbitrator will decide the case, and the ruling is final. So, for instance, if you want to take the company to court because a food made you sick, you couldn't, all because you downloaded some company coupon, even if it's for another food. General Mills is saying that if you do anything connected with one part of our enterprise, particularly electronically driven stuff, which tends not to hurt people, uh, you're going to give up rights to sue in court for any other connection with us. And, and that's, I think, quite unusual. General Mills responded to the concerns on its website, saying no one is precluded from suing us by purchasing our products at a store, and no one is precluded from suing us when they like one of our Facebook pages. But a General Mills spokesperson wouldn't comment further when asked specifically about limiting how someone could sue. More companies appear headed down this road, and it may just take an actual lawsuit to find out if the new policy is on solid legal ground or half-baked. Brad Satin, 5 Eyewitness News. There sure is a lot of slicing, pouring, stirring, flipping, tasting, and yup, judging going on. All in all, that, that deserves stellar. At the Pro Start Invitational, 10 groups of high school students hoping to measure up to become the top cooking team in the state. And talk about a pressure cooker. It's very nerve-wracking, I can tell you. Each team has 60 minutes starting from scratch and using their own ingredients. Two minutes, team. Two minutes. To come up with a salad or appetizer. I've always thought appetizers should be seafood. An entree. One minute. And dessert. Spending the entire school year practicing for this one hour. Three, two, one, time. Hands up. Inspired, many are quick to admit by what they see on TV. Hell's Kitchen. What? What is that? Nobody's going to do that here to these guys. Thanks to those food shows, the 18 judges are surprised what kids actually know. I have young 16, 17-year-olds coming up to me and going, you know, I'd, I'd like to use truffles. Some things work. The three of the desserts that I've seen so far, would I would put on my menu. Others, not so much. That's my fault. Take responsibility. And but what happens on these butane burners is just part of what it takes to be a chef. They're also judged on their non-cooking skills, like how's the menu look and how much for that dessert? A $15 dessert? That seems kind of high. Still, this Elk River team took the title and celebrated in style with a sandwich and Doritos. In Moundsview, Brad Satin, 5 Eyewitness News.